The mysterious Mr. Enter is an adult man who has dedicated his life to reviewing children's cartoons. Now, to some of you puritanical normies out there, that might sound pathetic. But once you consider that he used to be a brony channel, suddenly the SpongeBob reviews don't seem so bad. Even if you've never heard of him before, chances are you've encountered one of his famous opinions. He recently got memed on a bit because he criticized Turning Red for its lack of 9-11. This film takes place less than a year after the September 11th terrorist attacks. I bring this up because it radically altered the culture of the time, in ways that make this movie feel exceptionally ignorant of the time. Much like Jesus, they hated him because he told the truth. Because you know what? I unironically agree with him! I thought Turning Red was a shitty, boring movie and the mere mention of 9-11 would have at least made me laugh. If the mysterious Mr. Enter made Turning Red, I sincerely would have enjoyed the film more. This realization reminded me that somebody sent me a copy of Mr. Enter's children's novel during an episode of Monkey's Mailbag a few years ago. Is this Mr. Enter's book? Growing Around Party Panic by Mr. Enter? Are you serious? I thought that it didn't get funded. Or was that a cartoon? <laughs> the art doesn't fit on the page? It looks fine from here, but like here it's kind of blurry. And they drew Mr. Enter as a monkey, or as a monkey at the bottom. Man, you don't need to do the double spacing like that. This is not your middle school essay. Really? This is what the back looks like? Did you fucking even try? Considering how harshly Mr. Enter critiques children's media, I think it would only be fair for somebody like me to critique the children's media he created in the same way. But I don't think he has anything to worry about. He's the guy who wanted Turning Red to feature 9-11. If he applies even 10% of that level of based storytelling into this children's book, then surely I'm in for a rip-roaring hilarious adventure. It's important to note that this wasn't supposed to be a book. Mr. Enter wanted Growing Around to be a cartoon series, and in order to motivate people to donate to his $350,000 crowdfunding campaign, he wrote and released this book as a proof of concept. That's gonna be extremely important to remember going forward. This was a product that Mr. Enter sold for money, and it was meant to prove to people that he's capable of creating a quality work of art. Did he succeed? Let's find out. And now, without further ado, let's take a look at this dog shit book. Chapter 1, The Cover. They say you can't judge a book by its cover, but in this case you absolutely can. The cover art is blurry and pixelated, the artwork is as generic as possible, and the description on the back literally has typos! And she makes sure respects everyone else's choice of pets, whether they be a tiny little dog or a huge elephant. Now I get that this book is about an eight-year-old girl, but does it need to look like it was designed by one? Mr. Enter saw this 144p quality artwork and thought it was acceptable to sell for money. It's going to be difficult when the mayor seems to have it out for her in this enticing adventure where the people are growing around. What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> growing around is not a phrase and it's never even used in the book. I get that he thinks it's a clever name, but it's literally meaningless. Anyway, that's enough bitching about the cover. Let's dive into the degenerate hellscape that is growing around. Chapter two, world building, lore, and lack of creativity. There's a decent chance you have no idea what this book is or what it's about. So allow me to enlighten you. The basic premise is Growing Around takes place in a fantasy world where children are in charge and the adults are forced into servitude. Essentially, this is a utopia world for the kids and a terrifying dystopia for the adults. Think about it this way. In this world, when you're born, you are the king. You can do whatever you want and your parents have to obey your every command. But once you turn 18 and have kids, you become enslaved by your children. When your child turns four years old, they can start driving a car. Meanwhile, you have to go to a re-education camp like what they're doing in China to those Uyghur Muslims. 
Which begs the question, why would anyone in this world ever procreate? You know for a fact that your children will enslave and torture you! So in a way, this is voluntary slavery. Maybe in this world this is God's punishment for if you have unprotected sex. Even if you're married, in this world God hates procreation no matter what. And if you have sex and you come inside somebody, he wants you to be enslaved for the rest of your life. But the big question is, does this only happen to the parents or do all adults become enslaved? If they don't have any kids, who is there to enslave them? Well, we never see any actual adults in the story. The world is full of children who work all the jobs and drive around in bumper cars, and the only adults we ever hear about are the parents who are bussed off to the concentration camp every day. Has there been some sort of mass genocide of all adults who don't have children? I can only assume so. And now you probably think I'm full of shit and the parents aren't actually getting tortured. And surely Mr. Enter didn't write a children's book about re-education camps. Well, fuck you, you're wrong. At this school, the main emphasis is on cultivating imagination and creativity. And there are punishments for failure. So, if you do a finger painting, and this six-year-old teacher doesn't like the painting you did, the appropriate punishment is they pull out a paintball gun and they can hunt you through the school! These aren't Nerf guns or even laser tag. These are goddamn paintballs! Those can leave giant bruises on your bare skin! And the adults don't even get safety goggles. This shit is fucking horrific! And here lies the biggest problem with the book. A lack of creativity. This is supposed to be a world of childlike wonder and imagination. To the point where all adults are forced at literal gunpoint to retain as much creativity as possible. And yet, the world of the book is so embarrassingly lacking in actual creativity that Mr. Enter deserves a firing squad of paintballers. For example, the only two countries we learn about in the book are called the United Kidsdom and Americandy. That's right, not even the United States of Americandy, just Americandy. Considering that America consists of two continents, North and South America, I guess the implication here is that all 35 countries of the American supercontinent have united as one. But seriously, in terms of creativity, the best Mr. Enter could come up with when creating a childlike parody of America was Americ Candy. It's so fucking lazy and creatively bankrupt. The currency of this world isn't cash money. It's a parody of Pokemon called Genomon cards. For example, the main character Sally goes shopping for toys and she has to pay 247 Genomon cards at the register. Now here's where it gets dumb. It is canon that some cards are more rare than others. One of the characters is shocked that Sally has a Lightning Phoenix card with golden text. So logically, that rare card should be more valuable than a common card, right? Well, no. All of the cards are worth the exact same amount. If she pays with the rare Lightning Phoenix card, she still has to pay the other 246 cards. It would be like if the $100 bill, the $20 bill, and the $5 bill were all just worth $1. What's even the fucking point of rare cards existing if they're all of equal value? And here's where it gets straight up retarded. In addition to Genomon cards, there is also a franchise called Snatchamon. There are two separate parodies of Pokemon in this same universe for literally no reason. Did Mr. Enter forget that he called them Genomon and changed the name to Snatchamon halfway through? And back to my point about the lack of creativity, the only Snatchamon we learn about is called Magiderp. Wow, a parody of Magikarp, but you replaced Carp with Derp. Get it? Because Magikarp is fucking retarded. Can somebody please bring me a paintball gun?
There's a bunch of other world building and lore that just makes no sense. It's revealed that this society of children somehow had the technological capabilities of putting a kid on the planet Mars over 100 years ago. But then the main character is always listening to music with a CD player. Hmm. <laughs> we still haven't put a man on Mars to this day. And we all stopped using CD players 15 years ago. Was any thought put into this at all? Oh, remember that teacher I told you about who will shoot you if she thinks you aren't creative enough? Guess what she named her dog? Rover. Rover? Grover Johnson? No, not Grover! Rover. As in, the most stereotypical dog name to ever exist. A dog name so generic that a real world company specializing in dog sitting is called Rover. This complete lack of imagination not only proves the teacher to be a violent hypocrite, but it also breaks the immersion of living in a world fueled solely by childlike wonder and creativity. How about next time you name the dog something inspired? Like Blondie, or Tishka, or even Stepan Timofeevich. The possibilities are endless. Unless you're Mr. Enter. In which case the possibilities are generic and embarrassing. All that being said, there are actually a few parts of the world building that I liked. For example, police officers are replaced with Boy Scouts. And when they pull you over for a traffic violation, they can give you a wedgie in the middle of the street. There's no need for prisons or court hearings, so instead of getting jury duty, you can instead get party duty where you have to throw a party at your house for everybody in town. That's actually what the plot pretends to be about. That's why the subtitle for the book is Party Panic. But dear viewer, believe me when I say, the real plot of the book isn't about throwing a party. It's about abuse. Chapter 3 the main character is a cunt. This book is over 160 pages long, and the party subplot doesn't happen until halfway through. And even then, the party lasts for about five pages, and then the book abruptly ends halfway through the party with a to be continued. And as far as I know, it never was continued. The real plot of the story is the relationship between Sally and her mother who she severely abuses in ways that are not even comedic. It's extremely clear that Sally not only has no respect for her parents, but she might maliciously hate them. She refers to her parents by their names, Linda and Robert, so I assumed that was the custom in the growing around world. But no, other characters use the words mom and dad. Sally is the only one who calls her parents by their real names. When Linda gets bad grades on her report card, Sally wants to punish her mother by forcing her to eat muddy roller skates. Eating mud is one thing, but a roller skate isn't even fucking edible. And then when her mom is leaving the room, she trips over the ball pit, and Sally takes great pleasure in watching her mom fall and get hurt. Now, in case you were wondering how bad of a grade Linda received in order to warrant a punishment as cruel as eating a roller skate, well, she got a D minus in laser tag class. That's pretty bad, right? But then, it's later revealed that there is such a thing as a Z minus grade. So in this universe, the grading scale doesn't end at F. It goes all the way down to Z. In which case, a D minus would be equivalent to a B. She's forcing her mom to eat muddy roller skates for getting a fucking B in laser tag. This character is insane. Meanwhile, Sally claims the four main food groups are chocolatey, fruity, salty, and cheesy. Her mom begs her for any semblance of nutrition, desperately trying to add vegetables to their meals, and Sally denies her. She can either eat junk food or roller skates. There are no other options. Nobody in the book is described as being morbidly obese, and the generic character models show everyone being in shape. But the only food in this world is candy. Basically, the entire book is just Sally torturing her mother. 
She forces her to go to the re-education camp wearing embarrassing outfits. She helps her teacher hunt her down with paintball guns during a parent-teacher conference. I'm starting to think Mr. Enter might not like his own mother very much and used this story as a fantasy way of coping with his hatred. Chapter 4, A Comedy of Errors. You might not know this about me, but I went to college to be a high school English teacher. I actually did some student teaching at a middle school, and I spent a lot of time reading the work of literal 12-year-olds. So as somebody who is educated and experienced in this field, let me just say, literal 12-year-olds are better at writing than this adult man. And I don't mean writing character arcs or themes or a coherent story, I mean at the most basic level. This dumb motherfucker sold this book for money, intending for it to prove that he's capable of creating a quality product that people should crowdfund, and yet the book has no less than 40 obvious typos. That's an average of one mistake every four pages. This creatively bankrupt e-beggar couldn't even be bothered to proofread his own work before releasing it to the public with a $12 price tag. Somebody in my Discord told me he actually had an editor for this, in which case, you got fucking robbed. They didn't even try. Mr. Enter didn't even try. It might be the most embarrassing YouTuber book of all time. And in case you don't believe me, I wrote them all down. And now, I'm gonna read every single one! So without further ado, here's the quality writing of an adult man whose book was so shit, even he couldn't be bothered to read through it. You Brothers Place? Now, to be fair, this was a piece of dialogue from a character who pretends to speak French. So the typo might actually be intentional to highlight the stupidity of the average French person. I'm so glad that Mayor Tallulah brought dealership to town. I guess the character turned into a caveman for this scene. I walked to the back and car and reattached the grown-up carriage. Hey, maybe next time you should reattach your fucking brain! Now, here there's just a giant gap in the page for some reason. Not really sure why that's there. Rover bolted out into hallway. I began my climb up the three. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a new creative kid way of spelling the word tree? Is the H supposed to be silent? I pushed the level down all the way again. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a new creative kid way of spelling the word lever? Is the main character Japanese now? I locked into Linda's locker. Okay, this one's not really a typo, uh, but listen to this. But the styles are all mismatched and the aesthetics are all wrong. The elements are so mismatched. How about instead of using the same word twice, you pull up a little website called thesaurus.com. He just stared me. The arrow flew and plucked Carmichael in the face, sending into the ceiling before plummeting into my arms. It's about a time I gave Mare Hurtley a piece of my mind. It's about a time? What? Is the main character Super Mario now? It felt kinda nice to have your thoughts flood back into brain. Maybe that sentence would actually make sense if any spark of intelligence flooded into brain. Tell you what through, I'll give it back to you on one condition. Despite all of my better judgment, I removed my hand from forehead. More like despite your better judgment, you've released this book for public consumption! I gave him a hug, which was only broken my cell phone ringing. It was another Timmy test. Wow, we've got a two-in-one here. Back-to-back -back sentences with obvious mistakes. I thought that we were going to photographs at your house. Red is tough a paint to get out of clothes. April walked by her oyster shell framed bed and sat on the recline in the back end of the room. She pulled at and a latch unclicked. I couldn't help but stare as it was we moved on. I was hard to tell what that expression meant. Yeah, you and me both. Xavier and Sarah stood watch with April did her work. 
Linda looked at the papers in her hand and checker her camera. Well, at least she didn't chess her camera. I pulled it out and looked for the other bits of pieces. He was hit in the fact with a white powder, much to his surprise. When enough knock it offs had gone by, I had no choice but to push into the lake. Everyone problem thinks that I'm a party hating McGruffin. She would have been doing much better as school. Oh, I'm sorry. Did Linda become the school between chapters and you forgot to mention it? She said she ain't gonna do it and ever after making her wear that outfit. She shook her head, making even more hairs spring loose. April combed her hair down as walked through the living room. The little setup that we were able to do went a long way with streamings strewn across the wall and balloons bobbing. Robbie told me everything too. I opened the first door that I could get my hands on and fell into one of the of the most alien things that I had ever encountered. Oh, I'm sorry. Was Porky Pig your ghost rider? Hear me out. <laughs> Now, there are probably more mistakes in the book, but I'm not reading through this shit again to find them all. But it is humiliating that this many obvious mistakes appear in the story. Is this the quality of writing that inspires confidence for a cartoon series? No. Fuck no. I'm actually glad that this project was a complete failure and the Indiegogo campaign never came close to the goal. And just to be clear, Mr. Enter, a copy editor who combs through your book and corrects all the mistakes can cost up to $3,000. And I just did it for free. So as far as I'm concerned, you owe me three grand for doing the shit you should have done yourself. Obviously, Mr. Enter isn't going to pay up for all my hard work. So if you viewers at home would like to support what I do online, you can head over to patreon.com slash monkey. And if you want to see if I'm a better author than Mr. Enter, you can check out my book, The Triflers. Link in the description. I would challenge Mr. Enter to read and critique it, but at this point, I'm not even sure that he's literate. Bye, everybody!